Tennessee. There, black bears roam in the high peaks of the Great Smoky Mountains. Paddlewheel steamboats chug up the wide, muddy, winding Mississippi, and in between sit small southern towns and a number of major cities, some growing incredibly quickly, that have had a major influence on American music. Home to beautiful natural scenery, exciting cities, and an important role in the country's history, Tennessee is a unique and fascinating state, and the 17th place I will cover in the U.S. Explained, a 56-part series on every state, territory, and federal district in the country, by order of admission. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. This is the U.S. Explained, episode 17, Tennessee. According to the Keppen climate classification, Tennessee sits almost entirely in the humid subtropical climate zone, with hot summers, mild winters, and humidity, though some areas in the Great Smoky Mountains are in the cooler oceanic climate zone. Tennessee gets on average 50 inches of rainfall per year, more than the US average of 30, but pretty normal for the lusher eastern half of the country, especially the southeast. Like its northern neighbor Kentucky, Tennessee is divided into two time zones. The eastern section of the state sits in eastern time, and the middle and western parts are in central time. Out of Tennessee's major cities, Nashville and Memphis are in Central, and Knoxville and Chattanooga are in Eastern. Chattanooga sits right next to the time zone change, which is probably very annoying for people who live there to deal with. Tennessee is nicknamed the Volunteer State. The nickname comes from the War of 1812. Tennessee sent thousands of volunteer soldiers to serve in the war, a practice that continued in future conflicts like the Mexican-American War. The name Tennessee comes from Tennessee, a Cherokee town whose name comes from a Yuchi word meaning where the waters meet. The town gave its name to the Tennessee River. The state was then named for the river, which flows through it for much of its course. Tennessee's flag is quite unique and distinctive. It shows a red background with a vertical blue bar and a blue circle in the middle with three white stars inside, representing the eastern, western, and middle regions of the long, thin state. It's a good-looking flag, and it stands out from the many indistinguishable U.S. flags that just follow the state's seal and blue background design. It's debatable whether or not the flag is based off of the Confederate flag. Officially, no connection is given, but the flag, like many flags of southern states, shares some similarities in its design. Tennessee has a pretty large population, home to 6.9 million people, placing it at number 16 out of the 50 states, less than Massachusetts, but more than Indiana. It's helped by a pretty large urban population, home to two large and two medium-sized cities, as well as a number of smaller cities in fairly populous rural areas. In terms of land area, it's on the smaller side, coming in at 34th place and taking up 41,235 square miles or 106,798 square kilometers, smaller than Louisiana but larger than Ohio. As most larger states are located in the western half of the country though, Tennessee isn't especially small compared to its neighbors. With a larger than average population in a smaller than average state, Tennessee is towards the middle but on the higher side when it comes to population density. With 168 people per square mile, or 64.7 per square kilometer, it ranks 20th place out of the 50 states, with a higher population density than New Hampshire, but lower than South Carolina. Tennessee sits in the southeastern part of the U.S., in the region commonly known as the South. Though it borders states in the Deep South, Tennessee is part of the outer southern states known as the Upland South. It borders eight other states, the most of any state tied with Missouri. Kentucky and Virginia sit to the north, North Carolina to the east, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi to the south, and Arkansas and Missouri to the west. The Mississippi River makes up its western border. The river has historically changed its exact course many times, as it straightened out and turned former bends into oxbow lakes. Despite the river changing course, the original borders remain, and because of this, Tennessee at times sits on both sides of the river, and at times its neighboring states reach across. About two-thirds of the Mississippi River border is shared with Arkansas. As it follows the river upstream, the border with Arkansas changes to a border with Missouri, until it reaches a spot near Tiptonville where it leaves the river, becoming an east-west border with Kentucky sitting to the north. The border heads east for about 76 miles, or 122 kilometers, until it reaches Kentucky Lake, a large reservoir in the Tennessee River. It follows the lake north for 13 miles, or 21 kilometers, then heads east once more, dropping down for about two miles before continuing with little notches and dips here and there, 
but in a mostly straight line for around 230 miles or 371 kilometers until just south of the Cumberland Gap where the border with Kentucky becomes a border with Virginia. It then continues for 113 miles or 182 kilometers, reaching a spot in the Appalachians or Appalachians, the pronunciation really depends on where you live, where it makes a sharp turn to the southwest, becoming a border with North Carolina. The pronunciation of the mountain range is more of a north-south divide. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so I've always called the mountains in the region I'm from Appalachian, um, but I'll be pronouncing it Appalachian and Appalachia because that's what people in Tennessee normally would say. The Tennessee-North Carolina border weaves through the mountains, following ridgetops and crossing valleys for around 185 miles or 298 kilometers to a spot near the town of Copper Hill where it meets the border with Georgia, which sits to the south across a mostly straight east-west line. After about 72 miles or 116 kilometers, it becomes a border with Alabama. Alabama sits to the south for 147 miles or 236 kilometers until it meets the Tennessee River and becomes a border with Mississippi. The Tennessee-Mississippi border then continues for the next 119 miles or 192 kilometers until it meets the Mississippi River just south of Memphis. Just like its neighboring states of North Carolina and Kentucky, Tennessee is long and thin, and because of this, geographically it's almost a cross-section of the south, encompassing a range of different regions. To the east and west, it's hemmed in by natural borders. The Great Smoky Mountains, the tallest range of the Appalachians, form the state's eastern border, and the massive Mississippi River, the mouth of the fourth longest river system in the world, forms its western border. This, coupled with its long, thin shape, makes Tennessee easily broken up into three regions, east, west, and middle, marked by different geography and culture, each region revolving around very different urban areas. Tennessee's regional divides are called the Grand Divisions, and interestingly are legally broken up in the state's constitution. In fact, the Tennessee Supreme Court has to have members from each region, and rotates between holding its sessions in each. In addition, despite having very different geography from one another, each has a very similar population density. West Tennessee is mostly flat and agricultural, though the further east you go, the hillier it gets, and the more the farmland begins giving way to forests. It takes up about a quarter of the state's area and is home to 23% of its population. West Tennessee sits on the Mississippi River, which at this point is wide and winding. Much of the region is very rural, filled with farmland dotted with small towns. Just to the south, in Mississippi, sits the Mississippi Delta, an agricultural region that's one of the poorest parts of the country. The Mississippi is West Tennessee's lifeblood, and it's geographically and culturally very connected to other parts of the south along the river, like neighboring Arkansas and Mississippi. Here you'll find catfish and soul food, and the region revolves around the city of Memphis, which sits on the Mississippi across the river from Arkansas and on the border with Mississippi. Suburbs like West Memphis, Arkansas and South Haven, Mississippi stretch into both states. With 1.06 million people in it and its suburbs, Memphis is the most populous urban area in Tennessee and the 41st most populous in the country, home to more people than Salt Lake City but less than Jacksonville. Other than Memphis, small cities like Jackson, home to 71,000 in its urban area and one of the meeting places of the Tennessee Supreme Court, sit in the region as well. West Tennessee is also the heart of the state's black population. Many of the rural counties in the region are majority black, as is Memphis. In fact, out of all the metropolitan areas in the country, only Jackson, Mississippi has a larger proportion of black residents in the city and its suburbs than Memphis. As you move further east, the landscape goes from flat and agricultural to hillier and more forested. The Tennessee River, which cuts north from Alabama and Mississippi, runs across the state through the hills and for the most part forms the boundary between West and Middle Tennessee. Geographically, Middle Tennessee is a mixture of hills and flat plains and basins. The hillier parts of the region are typically covered in forests, whereas flatter areas are agricultural. The Cumberland River dips through this part of the state. Having flowed in from Kentucky, it makes a wide arc through the northern part of Middle Tennessee before flowing back into Kentucky. Nashville, Tennessee's fast-growing capital and second-largest urban area, is just under Memphis with 969,000 people in it and its suburbs, making it the 44th largest urban area in the country, and it's catching up soon. Nashville, which sits in a basin surrounded by hills on the Cumberland River, is Middle Tennessee's urban core and cultural heart, and other cities in the region like Murfreesboro, Lebanon, and Columbia are falling into the city's orbit. Murfreesboro, an urban area of 133,000, is a historic city that's the sixth largest in the state, but the suburbs of Nashville have essentially stretched to include it at this point. Nashville and its suburbs are the wealthiest part of the state and have helped turn Middle Tennessee into a prosperous, quickly growing region. 
Other smaller cities in Middle Tennessee include Cookville, east of Nashville, and Clarksville, near the Kentucky border. Clarksville on the Cumberland River is the 5th largest urban area in the state and the 208th largest in the country, home to 158,000 people. It's home to the 2nd largest military base on Earth, Fort Campbell, which it shares with Kentucky. Thanks to Nashville and smaller cities like Clarksville, Middle Tennessee is the largest region in the state, not only by area, taking up 40% of the state, but by population as well, with 2.88 million Tennesseans, or 42% of the state's population, living in its middle region. Moving further to the east, the state gets hillier, and the Cumberland Plateau juts through the state south from Kentucky, though the hilly plateau is far thinner at this point than it is in its northern neighbor. While eastern Kentucky is mostly rural, East Tennessee has a similar population density to the rest of the state, taking up 32% of Tennessee's area and home to 36% of all Tennesseans, 2.47 million people. This is due to the Great Valley of the Appalachians, a string of different valleys within the Appalachians that includes the Champlain Valley, Hudson Valley, Shenandoah Valley, and in Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley. This valley has made the development of cities among the Appalachians possible, and cities like Burlington, Albany, Allentown, Harrisburg, Hagerstown, and Harrisonburg, among others, all sit in the valley in other states. It's not entirely flat, in fact it's lined with dozens of small ridges and hills slicing across its length, but it's much flatter and more suitable for settlement than anywhere else in East Tennessee. On top of that, the Tennessee River, which starts in the valley and is fed by the mountains that surround it, flows south through the valley, feeding agriculture and urbanization in the region. The river then leaves the state in Alabama before turning west and then north where it re-enters Tennessee, flowing in the opposite direction between the west and middle parts of the state. While west and middle Tennessee are both anchored by one major city, east Tennessee is home to two medium-sized ones, both in the Tennessee Valley as well as a number of other smaller cities. In the central part of East Tennessee, on the Tennessee River, sits Knoxville, the state's third most populous urban area, and the 74th largest in the country, with 558,000 residents in it in its suburbs. Further downstream, on the Tennessee River in the border with Georgia, Chattanooga is the fourth largest urban area in Tennessee, whose 381,000 residents place it at 100th place in the country overall. Just as with Memphis, Chattanooga's suburbs stretch across state lines into neighboring Georgia, on the north end of the valley, near the Virginia border, sit the Tri-Cities of Tennessee, three small cities that form a triangle, each almost exactly 20 miles from one another. They're served by one airport, the Tri-Cities Airport, that sits in the middle of the three. Johnson City, home to 120,000 in its urban area, is the largest of the three in the birthplace of Mountain Dew. Kingsport, with 106,000, is a major center of chemical manufacturing, home to the headquarters of the Eastman Chemical Company and a major chemical manufacturing plant that occupies much of the city. Finally, Bristol, home to 69,000 people in its urban area, sits right on the border between Tennessee and Virginia. The border cuts right through the center of town on State Street, its main road, and it divides its business district right in two. Flags line the length of State Street, letting people know what state they're in at a given time. It seems in every way like a single town, and by most respects it is, but it has two governments, two mayors, and sits in two different states. The Great Smoky Mountains, home to some of the tallest peaks in the Appalachians, hem in the Tennessee Valley on its eastern side, and the border between Tennessee and North Carolina cuts through these peaks, Great Smoky Mountains National Park spanning both sides of the border. If West Tennessee is the most southern part of the state, East Tennessee is the least. It's part of Appalachia, though it breaks a number of the region's trends. While much of Appalachian Virginia, West Virginia, and Kentucky is struggling economically, East Tennessee is doing relatively well, and while the region has seen population decline all the way from eastern Kentucky to upstate New York, much of East Tennessee is actually growing in population. It's helped by a more forgiving landscape as well as a mixed economy that has helped it while manufacturing and coal mining has been in decline. Though manufacturing is also huge in East Tennessee, agriculture, hydroelectric energy production, scientific research, and a major tourism industry have all allowed East Tennessee to grow and prosper. What is now Tennessee was originally home to a number of different indigenous peoples. The Miccosukee lived in the southeast, the Uchi in much of the state or besides the area around the Mississippi, the Chickasaw and Quapaw in the west, the Muscogee or Creek in the south, and the Shawnee in the center of the state. With the arrival of European colonists in the Americas, they brought with them diseases that the indigenous people had not yet been exposed to, such as smallpox. These diseases ended up decimating the continent's indigenous peoples, killing 90% of them. Those that survived often died at the hands of colonists, as European settlements pushed further westward, encroaching on their land and pushing those that survived west. As the land west of the Appalachians was decimated by disease, a native people known as the Cherokee moved in and ended up inhabiting what is now much of the southeast, including most of Tennessee. 
pushing most of the other native peoples out. Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto was the first European to visit what is now Tennessee. Later, French and British explorers and traders would visit the region as well. As was the case in neighboring Kentucky, Tennessee was part of a region disputed between Britain, which claimed and sent many settlers to the Atlantic coast, and France, who laid claim to much of the continent's interior, where they sent fewer settlers to but ran a massive fur trading empire, with the help of many native peoples. In many areas, British colonial charters claimed land all the way from the coast to the Mississippi River, though in practice they really only exercised control of coastal regions at first. The province of Carolina, chartered in 1663, was said by its charter to extend all the way to the Mississippi. When it split into two, the colony of North Carolina kept these vast western claims. France claimed these inland regions as well. Smaller conflicts broke out between them such as the Chickasaw Wars in the 1730s, in which Britain and their allies, the Chickasaw, fought France and their allies, the Choctaw, in West Tennessee in order to weaken France's control over the region. Full-scale war broke out with the French and Indian War in 1754, Britain fighting against France and Spain, with different native tribes allying with each. Britain won and gained control of French land all the way up to the Mississippi River, solidifying their control over their western claims. As British settlers crossed the Appalachians into the western half of North Carolina, war broke out between them and the Cherokee who lived there. In response, not wanting to risk more conflict and hoping to keep their colonies dependent on British trade, Britain established the Proclamation Line, which forbade their colonists from settling west of the Appalachians on their new lands. Many ignored this, however, and crossed west over the mountains, often using the nearby Cumberland Gap to seek and settle new land. Many of these settlers in the western half of North Carolina were English, but many others were Scots-Irish, an ethnic group from Northern Ireland whose ancestors had moved there from Southern Scotland and Northern England as part of the British colonization of Ireland. Because Britain did not allow settlers to move west across the Proclamation Line and sitting so far away from the population centers of North Carolina, settlers in the region essentially formed their own government, called the Watauga Association, to govern themselves, although Britain shut it down after three years. These frontier mountain settlers were often rebellious and desired autonomy from North Carolina. When the Revolutionary War broke out, they organized another government, called the Washington District, supporting the revolution. After the war, the 13 colonies became independent from Britain. In 1789, North Carolina ratified the Constitution and was admitted as the 12th state. It was solidifying its claims to its west, as treaties with native people, often signed unfairly, in bad faith, or broken, officially ceded western claims to the U.S., though much of the region was still essentially under Cherokee control. As settlers poured in, the western half of North Carolina, separated by the Appalachians from the rest of the state, wanted autonomy, often feeling that North Carolina's government wasn't protecting settlers in the region from Cherokee attacks. In 1784, a number of counties in the northern Tennessee Valley declared independence from North Carolina, calling themselves the State of Franklin after Benjamin Franklin. It was unrecognized and rejoined North Carolina a few years later, but it was clear many in this part of the state wanted to leave. After the war, North Carolina owed money to the federal government and decided to give its western half to them in exchange for forgiving their debts, ending the regional independence movements that had long been a problem for North Carolina. It went from being a part of a state to becoming a territory known as the Southwest Territory. Though a popular idea at first, the Southwest Territory's residents still felt neglected, just this time by the federal government and not North Carolina. Soon, they began pushing to become their own state. After a few years, on June 1, 1796, the Southwest Territory was admitted as Tennessee, named for the river in the valley where many of its residents lived. It became the 16th state to join the Union and the first formed from a territory. Sessions of Cherokee land continued, and as more settlers moved west into Tennessee, the Cherokee were pushed south into Georgia, their territory shrinking. Eventually, along with the Chickasaw and Muscogee, as well as a couple other tribes, after seeing their territory shrink significantly and adopting the lifestyles of the Americans, including in some cases slavery, were forced west to Oklahoma on the brutal Trail of Tears, which saw thousands die. As more settlers moved into Tennessee, cities like Nashville grew. At the same time, enslaved black people were brought in, forced to work on cotton and tobacco plantations in the state, mostly in the flatter middle and western parts. West Tennessee in particular was dominated by slavery, home to rich soils and river floodplains that quickly made it a center of agricultural production, and by the time the Civil War broke out, a quarter of Tennesseans were enslaved. The state, at the time the frontier of American settlement, was often a jumping off point for people moving further west. For example, Sam Houston, Tennessee's governor, moved west to Texas where he led the Texas Revolution and served twice as its president before becoming governor after its annexation by the United States, the only person to serve as governor of two different states. 
Davy Crockett, a congressman from Tennessee, followed Houston to Texas and died at the Alamo, becoming a Tennessee folk hero. As tensions grew over the horrible practice of slavery, Tennessee was a divided state. In the 1860 election, a compromised candidate named John Bell, one of Tennessee's senators, won the state. After Lincoln's victory, a first vote on whether to secede failed, and 54% of Tennesseans initially opposed secession. While slavery dominated West Tennessee wanted to join the Confederacy, the mountainous east of the state was far less dependent on slavery and strongly supported the Union. After a successful second referendum, Tennessee was the last state to secede, doing so on June 8, 1861. Pro-Union forces in East Tennessee attempted to split off from the state and rejoin the Union, similar to how West Virginia split from Virginia. One of the state's senators from Tennessee's eastern part, Andrew Johnson, was pro-Union, and after the state seceded, he fled and refused to give up his seat, the only senator from a state that seceded who continued to represent their state in the Senate from exile. Johnson was later appointed by Lincoln to be Tennessee's military governor, administering parts of the state that had been recaptured by Union forces. He of course then was chosen as Lincoln's running mate for re-election and succeeded him to the presidency after his assassination. Due to its location on the edge of the Confederacy, Tennessee was a major battleground during the war. Only Virginia was the site of more Civil War battles than Tennessee. The Battle of Chickamauga, fought near Chattanooga on both sides of the Tennessee-Georgia border, was the second bloodiest battle in the entire conflict, after just Gettysburg. Murfreesboro was the site of a battle that saw a higher proportion of soldiers who fought in it die than any other major Civil War battle, nearly a third. Shiloh was the site of the bloodiest battle in the early part of the war, and other sites like Nashville, Franklin, and Missionary Ridge were all home to major Civil War battles. Right after the war, a steamboat near Memphis, the Sultana, exploded, and more than a thousand people, mostly former prisoners of war, were killed. It's to this day the country's worst ever maritime disaster. While most states that had joined the Confederacy were placed under military government immediately after the war, Tennessee, under a new government, ratified the 14th Amendment during the war, before even most northern states did, and passed laws allowing black men to vote. Because of this, they were able to quickly be readmitted to the Union, joining on July 24, 1866, years before most other Confederate states were able to. However, things quickly took a turn for the worst. Under the presidency of Tennessee and Andrew Johnson, Confederate states were fast-tracked readmission and allowed to elect former Confederate politicians into office. It was the beginning of the end of Reconstruction, and many southern states, such as Tennessee, began passing racist Jim Crow laws which prevented black people from exercising many of the rights passed in Reconstruction Amendments. In 1865, in the Tennessee town of Pulaski, a violent vigilante hate group formed, calling themselves the Ku Klux Klan. They terrorized black people across the South, as well as other groups like Jews and Catholics, and people who supported racial integration in general, committing racist lynchings, bombings, and terrorist attacks, and many times attempted to overthrow local governments, as well as intimidate black people when voting. Many black Tennesseans, especially in the cotton-growing region of West Tennessee, were forced to work in an exploitative system of farming known as sharecropping. During the World Wars, many people left industrial and manufacturing jobs in northern cities to go serve overseas. That, coupled with the fact that so much more industrial output was needed for the war effort, opened up many job opportunities in the north. Fleeing racial discrimination and poverty, many black Tennesseans left the state, heading north to industrial cities, many in the Midwest, as part of the Great Migration. In 1900, nearly 24% of Tennesseans were black. By 1950, that number was down to 16%. It was the first state to ban alcohol, doing so years before Prohibition. The town of Dayton was the site of the Scopes Monkey Trial, at the time a very publicized and controversial event in which a Tennessee teacher was accused of teaching evolution to his students, which was banned in the state at the time. Interestingly, the whole event was staged, intended to just be a publicity stunt to bring attention to the town. It also played a crucial role in women's suffrage. Tennessee was the last state that ratified the 19th Amendment, putting it over three-fourths of the states and giving women the right to vote. In much of the South, a long dependence on agriculture led the region to lag behind the rest of the country in industrialization and development. Because of this, much of Tennessee was at the time one of the poorest parts of the country. During the Great Depression, it only grew worse. Under President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the Tennessee Valley Authority was created to provide jobs, electricity, and development to Tennessee and parts of other states around the Tennessee River. Headquartered in Knoxville, they built 29 dams all along the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers, turning the entire Tennessee Valley into a massive hydroelectric project and helping modernize the impoverished state. 
Today, they're the country's sixth largest power supplier and produce 90% of all of Tennessee's electricity, and the state is filled with reservoirs throughout the valley. During World War II, Tennessee played a crucial role in the creation of the atomic bomb. The government bought a massive tract of farmland west of Knoxville, where they constructed Oak Ridge, a planned city built for the purpose of enriching the uranium needed to make nuclear weapons. Oak Ridge was known as the secret city, it was guarded and hidden, and it didn't show up on maps and the outside world didn't know it existed. Scientists working at the lab often just worked on a specific task and for the most part were unaware of what they were collectively working on. While the bombs themselves were built at Los Alamos, New Mexico, Oak Ridge was essential for the process of uranium enrichment and home to the second ever artificial nuclear reactor. Today, the city is still home to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the Department of Energy's largest science laboratory, and a massive center of research in the Y-12 National Security Complex, an enormous nuclear weapons manufacturing facility. Tennessee played a crucial role in the civil rights movement. In Nashville in 1960, a sit-in movement formed protesting against segregated lunch counters in the city. In Memphis, thousands of black sanitation workers went on strike in 1968, protesting racial discrimination and dangerous working conditions. Famed civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. went to visit the workers, and while staying at the city's Lorraine Motel, was assassinated by James Earl Ray, an event that shocked and changed the nation. Tennessee, especially the middle and east parts of the state, continued to modernize and grow, and in 1982, the World's Fair was held in Knoxville, bringing 11 million people into the city. Memphis is Tennessee's largest urban area, home to 1.06 million people. It's the anchor and urban core of West Tennessee, and along with Minneapolis, St. Louis, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans, is one of the five major urban centers on the Mississippi River, with suburbs stretching into both Arkansas and Mississippi. It's one of the largest majority black cities in the country, and is home to one of the largest black populations in the U.S. It was a historic center of agriculture, specifically the cotton industry, and grew into a major inland port of shipping up and down the river, especially for agricultural goods. Today, the city and West Tennessee as a whole are somewhat stagnating. Memphis is hardly growing, and most of West Tennessee is losing population, while the rest of the state is growing rapidly. Tied to these economic challenges and regional population decline, it's seen issues with poverty and crime. However, it's still a fascinating and important city with a lot to offer. It feels old and historic, even most of its skyscrapers are from the mid-1900s. It's named for the ancient Egyptian city of Memphis, another city on a massive river, and it even has its own pyramid, the seventh tallest on Earth. The Memphis Pyramid, an enormous glass and bronze pyramid by the river, is an iconic part of the city. The Memphis Grizzlies used to play there, and it was a major concert and event venue. Today, it's an enormous Bass Pro Shops with an archery and shooting range, an aquarium, restaurant, and an observation deck, and is a major tourist attraction. Mud Island in the river is a large park. It's home to the Mississippi River Museum and the Mississippi River Walk, which includes a scaled-down replica of the entire river, following its course from Lake Itasca to its mouth in the Gulf of Mexico. The site of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, the Lorraine Motel, is now home to the National Civil Rights Museum, a really great museum which is certainly worth a visit. Memphis played a crucial role in the American music scene. Elvis Presley was from Mississippi but lived in Memphis for many years and recorded much of his music there. Graceland, Elvis's Memphis estate, is one of the most famous and visited houses in the country, bringing in a half million tourists every year. On top of that, Memphis has a huge history of blues. The genre originated in the Deep South, but made its way to Memphis where venues on Beale Street made the city famed for its blues scene. Today, Beale Street is a famous music and entertainment district and is lined with blues clubs and music venues. Soul music has an important history in the city as well, and Memphis soul is one of the genre's most popular styles. Memphis-style barbecue is a pork, slow-cooked pit barbecue that developed in the city and became incredibly popular around the world. It's home to one of the largest barbecue competitions on earth, which brings in hundreds of thousands of people to watch. On top of barbecue, soul food is common in the city, and sitting on the river, catfish is popular as well. Today, the city's economy is dominated by shipping. It's the headquarters of FedEx, and the Memphis airport is home to the FedEx World Hub, which has turned it into the busiest cargo airport in the world. Most FedEx packages are sorted and shipped out of the Memphis airport, and it ships 3.3 million packages every day. It's also the headquarters of AutoZone, the largest auto parts company in the country, and home to the University of Memphis, the second largest college in the state. Tennessee's second largest urban area is Nashville, home to 969,000 people, but the fast-growing city is soon going to overtake Memphis and become its largest. It sits on the Cumberland River in Middle Tennessee, and new buildings are popping up throughout the city. It seems like the skyline is always filled with cranes building something new, as new residents move in, many of them transplants from out of state. 
the city's home to a growing immigrant population as well. In Nashville, old brick buildings stand in contrast to tall glass and steel skyscrapers. Most of the tallest buildings in the state are in Nashville, including Tennessee's tallest. The iconic AT&T building, which with its two pronged towers is commonly called the Batman building because it looks like Batman's mask. Nashville is a booming, thriving city. Most of the fastest growing counties in the state are in it and its suburbs. It's Tennessee's capital city and its unique looking capital building sits on a hill downtown. A large park extends out from the capital and another park, Centennial Park, is home to a full-scale model of the Parthenon, complete with a replica of the Athena Parthenos inside. There's a major college presence in Nashville as well. The famous Vanderbilt University is there, as is Belmont, a Christian college, and Fisk, a historically black college and university. Nashville is of course famous for country music. It's known as Music City and the country music capital of the world. The country music industry is centered in Nashville and aspiring country artists often move to the city hoping to kickstart their careers. The Grand Ole Opry is located in the city, a famed weekly country concert that draws almost a million people every year. Music Row is a neighborhood filled with record labels and Broadway is a street downtown dotted with honky tonks, bars that play country music. Due to its status as a music and entertainment center, Nashville is a lively city and it's common to see party bikes, portable bars riding around downtown at night, and you'll sometimes hear the city nicknamed Nash Vegas. It's famous for Nashville hot chicken, a spicy fried chicken served at places like Hattie B's. Tennessee's third largest urban area is Knoxville, home to 558,000 people. It sits in the Tennessee Valley along the Tennessee River in East Tennessee and is hemmed in by mountains and forests, just miles away from the Great Smoky Mountains. Nearby mountain towns like Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge are major tourist destinations, and Oak Ridge and its enormous laboratories aren't far from the city either. It's home to the University of Tennessee, the largest college in the state, and the university takes up much of the city and has a big influence on it. As the headquarters of the TVA, it played a crucial role in the development of Tennessee and much of the South, and continues to be a major center of the hydroelectric energy industry. It's a fast-growing city and a gateway to outdoor activities, recreation, and tourism throughout East Tennessee. The World's Fair Park sits on the site of the 1982 World's Fair and is home to the Sun Sphere, an iconic golden tower with an observation deck that overlooks downtown. The last city I'll talk about is Chattanooga, the fourth largest urban area in the state, home to 381,000 people. Like Knoxville, it's surrounded by mountains sitting along the Tennessee River in East Tennessee just before it leaves the state, and its suburbs stretch into neighboring Georgia. A historic rail hub and industrial city with an important Civil War history, it's surrounded by mountains and like Knoxville, beautiful mountain scenery, forests, and waterfalls sit just outside the city. A beautiful small city, it's often ranked one of the best places to visit in the country, and its waterfront is home to the Tennessee Aquarium, one of the largest aquariums in the country. 73.4% of Tennesseans are white, 16.5% are black, 5.6% are Latino, and 1.8% are Asian American. West Tennessee is majority black, a legacy of the region's history of slavery. Similar to its neighbor Kentucky, many Tennesseans report their ancestry as American, a trend across much of Appalachia in the South. However, due to historic patterns of migration to these regions coupled with the fact that these groups are likely underreported compared to the past, it's thought that typically people who report their ancestry as American are mostly English and Scots-Irish, and this is thought to be the case in Tennessee as well. In terms of religion, most Tennesseans are Christian, and the vast majority of those Christians are Protestant, with evangelicals alone making up over half of the state's population. As I've mentioned before, Tennessee is home to a number of culinary traditions, with southern food, soul food, Memphis barbecue, Nashville chicken, and so on. Jack Daniels, the most popular brand of whiskey in the country, is produced in the middle Tennessee town of Lynchburg, and other companies like Dollar General and Cracker Barrel, as well as the manufacturing site of Pringles, are all located in the state. Tennessee is of course known for its enormous influence on music, with blues and soul in Memphis and country in Nashville. The Grand Ole Opry is the heart of country music, and many famous musicians were either from or had a connection to Tennessee, such as Elvis, Dolly Parton, Billy Ray and Miley Cyrus, Taylor Swift, Justin Timberlake, Drake, Aretha Franklin, Johnny Cash, Tammy Wynette, Tina Turner, Pat Boone, and really too many others to name. The Great Smoky Mountains, which it shares with North Carolina, is the most visited national park in the entire country, with 14 million visitors every year. Outside the park, towns like Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge are enormous tourist destinations as well. Gatlinburg is a huge resort town home to a ski resort, the Aquarium of the Smokies, and an observation tower, the Gatlinburg Space Needle. Pigeon Forge is home to a number of amusement parks, most famously Dollywood, a huge Dolly Parton themed park that brings in millions of yearly tourists. Fall Creek Falls is one of the tallest waterfalls in the eastern US, and Frozen Head State Park is home to the Barkley Marathons, 
a hundred mile, very strange race through the mountains with a bunch of very interesting rules and traditions that only 15 people have ever finished successfully. I strongly recommend you look it up because it is truly one of the weirdest and most fascinating events you'll ever learn about. Agriculture is still big in the state, especially in West Tennessee, and it's a huge beef producer along with soy, corn, tobacco, cotton, and lumber. Hydroelectric energy is very important with the TVA and just like neighboring Kentucky, it's a big automobile manufacturing center. The US headquarters of Nissan and Mitsubishi are there and the Nissan Smyrna plant is the largest automobile manufacturing facility on the continent. Tractor Supply is headquartered there as is the International Paper Company, the largest paper producer in the world. Tennessee is home to a major league team in soccer, football, hockey, and basketball. Three are based in Nashville, the NFL's Tennessee Titans, NHL's Nashville Predators, and MLS's Nashville SC, and one in Memphis, the NBA's Memphis Grizzlies. Its largest newspapers are the Tennessean in Nashville, the Commercial Appeal in Memphis, and the News Sentinel in Knoxville. Its busiest airports are the Nashville International Airport and the Memphis International Airport, which is the country's largest cargo hub. Famous Tennesseans that I haven't mentioned already include Morgan Freeman, Quentin Tarantino, Natalia Dyer, Nle Choppa, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, Juicy J, Samuel L. Jackson, and many more. No presidents were born in Tennessee, but three considered their home state and built their political careers out of it. The influential and controversial Andrew Jackson, who implemented the Trail of Tears, represented Tennessee in the House and Senate and served on the state Supreme Court. After a famous war career, he became a nationally known figure from winning the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812. Following the war, Jackson became the territorial governor of Florida and then was elected as one of Tennessee's senators again before winning the presidency. His estate, the Hermitage, is in Nashville. James Knox Polk had represented Tennessee in the House, becoming Speaker of the House, and then been the state's governor before winning the White House. Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's successor and the first president to be impeached, is widely considered to be one of the worst presidents in history. Before he was president and vice president, Johnson served twice as Tennessee's governor, once as a military governor, and had represented the state in the Senate and House, as well as been mayor of his hometown, Greenville. Politically, Tennessee is a very red state with a Cook Partisan Voting Index, or PVI, of R plus 14, which means that in a given year, Republicans tend to do 14% better in Tennessee than in the country on average. Even smaller cities like Knoxville and Chattanooga tend to lean Republican. Out of their nine members of the House of Representatives, seven are Republicans and two are Democrats. Both their senators, Marsha Blackburn and Bill Hagerty, are Republicans, as is their governor, Bill Lee. That is it for Tennessee. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content and shout outs in my videos such as these. Please be sure to check out the TII store where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official that is interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. One of the products I'm most excited about are these limited edition frame state prints that commemorate each video in the US Explained. These are available as soon as the corresponding US Explained video is uploaded, but only 10 of each will be released, so make sure to buy one before they go out of stock. Right now, you'll be able to buy a Tennessee State print, so please click the link in the description and go pay a visit to the TII store. Also, please subscribe to my brother's channel, Quinn the Cameraman. He made the great intro at the beginning of this video that I use in all the US Explained videos, and he did the editing, so go show him some support. I tried to be pretty thorough with this video, but I know there were definitely things I missed as there was a lot to talk about. I want to give a big thank you to everyone from Tennessee who helped give me information for this video, leaving detailed and informative comments on YouTube as well as Discord. I truly would not have been able to make this video without all your help. My next video in this series will be on Ohio, so get excited. I really appreciate the well over 600 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information about upcoming states in the series. It's a great community and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the description. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting. <laughs>